Well, first of all, happy birthday and congratulations. How are you feeling? Thank you so much. I'm feeling great. Got a win. I'm not hurt. I'm happy. I'm smiling. I don't have any damage. I'm happy to be here. So did that fight go kind of the way you'd imagined in your brain, or did, did you have to adjust at all? I mean, you weren't in there very long, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, short answer, yes, it went the way we thought it would go. Um, I knew I had the ability to knock him out in round one. Um, I, I truthfully didn't believe he was going to make it out of round two if it did go further. Um, as far as the knockout finish itself, I think I had to go to him, which I, I expected him to come to me. And, uh, yeah, I mean, look, we were prepared. We were ready for everything. And that's the thing. Like, I'm good at adjusting. I can adjust. And uh, that's what I did, you know. So went out there and uh, kind of took what he gave me, realized he wanted to stay on the outside, which didn't make much sense to me. He was going to try and throw a couple kicks. He did throw a nice head kick. I mean, I blocked it, but it was good. <laughs> So would you say that that he didn't surprise you all that much going in there? You kind of feel like he acted the way you kind of expected? Or were there some things in there that kind of surprised you? Yeah, no, I wouldn't say that he surprised me with anything. Um, I, there wasn't that much film on him, but I could, I could tell from the film that I did watch, which was, you know, a total of about a minute because there's not that much footage, um, that he kind of rotated his hands on each hook. So one hand would drop while the other one's thrown. So I, I was really banking on trying to exchange with him as he was leaping in. And, uh, yeah, um, no, I'm not surprised by anything. Um, I'm very well prepared with my team and my coaching. You also seem really natural with all the cameras around you all week. You know, for most people coming in for their, de their debut, they're you know, surprised by the lights and the, the crowd and everything. How do you – what do you attribute that to, that you're – just kind of natural out there I psych myself out to just really believe like I'm not gonna live forever so like I'm just I want to I want to make a statement in my life that I have one chance to live you know and uh so uh, honestly it's just being thankful to be alive to be here to have the opportunity um to do what I do make my own schedule and um you know at the end of the day like what what is the pressure by saying what you believe you know I think a lot of people don't perform um if because they say things that they're, they're not sure like 100 percent confident in you know I say things that I'm 100 percent confident in you know I, I was in there I was training I was getting screamed at by my coaches to you know be on time and train and do the things I'm supposed to do to be here so um at the end of the day I know that social media and you know cameras come with it and I'm good with that um I think I'm a character that people want to know so I'm going to talk my shit. And you have a lot of backing from Dana. It sounds like maybe you guys spoke right after the fight. Can you let us in on that? Yeah. Um, I asked Sean Shelby in the cage. I was like, hey, let me talk to my boss. And, um, you know, he was kind of like, ah. he's like, I'll, I'll do it. And I told him, I, like, I need to talk to him because I need to thank him because he gave me a home for a year. You know, he gave me money on the side of contender uh, and really – that secured me being able to have a place to live for the next year, you know, on the house of Dana. So I think the guy gets shit on a lot for not being a good dude and um, or, you know, whatever, you know, bullshit that people say sometimes. But as far as and, and I don't know any of the other stories, but as far as how he's treated me, he's treated me gracefully. And, um, you know, he's uh, he's my boss and I want to like him. I want to respect him and I have all the respect in the world for him. So to me, it means something to go and shake my boss's hand after I go and I work for him. Sounds like you'll probably get another bonus, um, if not a public one, a, a, you know, behind the scenes one. Now that you have a house, what would you use that bonus for? Um, I'm going to go on vacation. Um, but as far as the bonus, like I need to, I, I, I live in a condo, so I want to start saving some money to buy a house in the next year or so. And, uh, you know, really establish my life as, as a full grown adult that's able to provide for himself and make a living, you know, cause, uh, I think the dollar value is going down these days and, you know, starting out at, in the UFC, you're not making a ton of money, but, you know, you go out there, you do things like that. I'm hoping that it rewards um, me in the way that I need it to so I can uh, take a little bit of time to heal my body and, you know, get a little bit better and enjoy life a little bit. I notice you keep looking at the fight, and I don't blame you. I'm curious what you're thinking. Do you have somebody you're rooting for? Or? Um, no, I don't have anybody I'm rooting for. I like both of these guys. I think Chidi's really good. Um, you know, they're super respectful. I got to talk to Chidi a little bit. I like him, so I guess I would pull for him. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're two big-ass middleweights. I, I enjoy the fight. So, um, yeah, I'm just 
I like, I love, I love, I'm still a fan. Like I went out there and did my thing, but I love, I love watching it. So I watch it every weekend and uh, I always have, even before I was in here. How quick do you want to get back in there? Um, I don't have a time right now. I'm not going to rush that just because, you know, I went from a fight a month ago to this fight and, uh, you know, I want to enjoy life a little bit. I think people try to turn around and fight, fight, fight. And I did that, you know, um, but I don't want to be arrogant and disrespectful of anybody else in this division. I want to go back. I want to get better. And, uh, you know, I don't really care what people on the outside think, whether I'm the best or I'm the worst. I care about where I think I'm at in my career. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go back. I'm going to get it to work. I'm going to take a little vacation and uh, let my hands heal up. My hands feel pretty sore, and which I don't know how. I only threw like three punches, right? But, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of time. I want to enjoy the holidays this time. So maybe October, November, Thanksgiving, and then we'll get back to work. Thank you. Thank you. I know he didn't get much chance to show how his cardio and things like that were because the fight was so quick, but with him coming in there and having a struggle to get to make that weight, he did come under still a pound under when he went back in there. But when you see that, what sort of message did that send to you going into the fight, and did that possibly play out there into the fight? No, I don't think his weight cut had anything to do with it whatsoever. Um, I, I talked to him. And I think the issue was that he was cutting weight in the morning to try and make it, and they kind of cut him five minutes earlier than what he had planned, or else he would have made the weight. So it is what it is. Um, ooh, GD. Ah, GD. Shit. That was a good finish. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't think the weight cut had anything to do with it. And at the end of the day, like, I, I had a weight cut, you know what I mean? It's not easy for me. So um, it is what it is. And yep. I know, sorry, and I know earlier this week you said that, you know, you weren't too caught up in the fact that there being cameras around and, and, you know, you stayed true to yourself. That being said, after this week is over and the cameras are gone, do you welcome that? And how do you stay extra motivated not having all these eyes looking at every moment that you're doing? Yeah, look, man, I, this is my job, you know what I mean? So if, I, if I'm out here and people want to follow me with cameras and they think my boring ass is interesting you know i just gotta be careful about what i say sometimes but you know I'm, I'm just i'm here for a good time man like why not i love my team my team's hilarious coach john's freaking like fucking hilarious not freaking but he is hilarious and i have a good time out here you know andre's doing some weird shit to me waking me up this morning for my birthday and you know i, I enjoy the whole thing man and yeah i welcome like when the camera's on here but i'm gonna see all, all my all my team still you know what i mean like this has become a part of my life and i never had a team two years before this you know i had a team but i didn't have a team of fighters that were chasing the same goal as me so you know and i know my coaches i know they love me i know they care about me i have my boy david stevens out here i'm sad he didn't get to watch me uh in the arena and I also have my camera guy, Chandler Henry, who we went to high school with, who's been documenting everything I'm doing anyway. And like she said, happy birthday. Is it too personal what Coach was doing that was weird stuff that you said he woke him up? Woke him up <laughs> like, or are you able to sort of share? When I, when I say weird shit, man, like, listen, like, we're, we're doing bro shit. Like, Andre Petrowski, he's not my coach. He's my teammate, but he was coaching me tonight. So <laughs> he, uh, I'm not going to say what he did. It was, it was all in good grace, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, go check my Instagram story, bro. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> what a way to wake up. Congrats on the victory. Thank you. Joe, congrats on the win. Welcome back. There was a couple of fighters when they left on media day said, I'll see you Saturday. Someone did that. And, you know, like, lived up to it. You lived up to it. And then some hashtag now is be like Joe and be Joe Pfeiffer. I don't think I could be Joe Pfeiffer because when you – blasted your guy then you stood in front of him and like talk trash what what was going on there uh so coach john marquez that's my dog uh listen he uh he does a really good job of bringing me to that place of uh just like fuck you i don't know i don't you know what i mean like at the end of the day like you're trying to take something from me so uh you know, he knows what my power is. He knows how I, I compete and, like, what I come from and, and what I've endured to get there. So he was just telling me in the back before I went out there, he said, once you slump this motherfucker, make sure you, you let him know, like, you're confident in it. It wasn't no flu shot. And it wasn't, you know what I mean? So I hit him, and I, I, didn't, I don't remember saying anything 
uh, maybe I did, but, you know, and then I, I gave him another one because it's just, I'm just letting you know this wasn't no fluke shit. I caught your shit, you know what I mean? So I put you down, and I put the nail in the coffin, like I said. Right on, man. Good Every great player needs their Phil Jackson, so congrats on the win. I don't know who that is, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, over here real quick. Hey. You mentioned the team and uh, the fun that you have and how much they also motivate you. You said two years ago that you didn't have a team like this. So how much has this current team that you have around you elevated your game? 1,000%, you know what I mean? Um, me and Andre Petrowski have trained for almost 10 years together, right? And he went over, when I broke my arm, he went over to join Daniel Gracie's. And, um, you know, I had I been contemplating going over there because my coach, Sam Morpisa, at the time, you know, we, we weren't getting enough work together, but he gave me all the time he could. You know, he helped mentor me and sponsorships and just guide me. You know, that's why I'm so natural here right now because I'm prepared for all this. But, you know, I've got to keep a good friend in Andre, and he went over there. Um, and then I, I, I've known Andre, Petre uh, not Andre, I'm sorry, Sean Brady since I was maybe 11, 12 years old. And, um, we always were cordial, and then I went over there, and it was just, I just, it was like a puzzle piece, man. I just plugged right in, and I was good. I got to talk to John, and I, we just clicked, man. You know what I mean? These are the homies. These aren't formal fucking people that are like, you can't say that. Like, I, I can't stand that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in a gym, and we just talk our shit, bust each other's balls, and we work hard as shit. That's it. You know, Coach John says it all the time. Hard fucking work. That's it. That's all we do. And I know you mentioned that maybe you want to take a vacation, but is there anybody else in this middleweight division that you're eyeing for that next fight? Uh, I would like to fight Deron Wynn. You know, I think that would be um, – he's a wrestler. You know, he's, um, he's got a couple fights in the UFC. I like fighting short guys, so you know what I mean? I don't want to call anybody out right now. i got to think about it for a little bit. But uh, I would say Deron Wynn if I was to call somebody out. So I don't know what he's got going on. All right, last one for me. I mean, you had some fun today waking up for the birthday. Any plans for tonight for the birthday celebration? Be around my team and the people I care about, man. That's it. I'm not drinking because last time me and Andre drank, I woke up in a fucking tub naked. So, <laughs> <laughs> And I got on plane drunk still, so <laughs> no. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm just going to be around my coaches and, you know, have a good time. And, uh, you know, I got my, my team out here. So I'm going to go back. and Oh, my sponsors, Mike Hartman, H&H &H Excavating. Derek, uh, SC Arms, that guy took care of me. Um, I got Honey Grow as a sponsor. You know, I got a bunch of sponsors and a bunch of people I need to thank. Um, so just generally thank you to all my sponsors. You know, I wouldn't be here without them. And uh, they are what really allows me to train full time. And uh, don't forget the little guys when you people get up here. You know, that goes for anybody in the UFC. Don't neglect the people that helped you get here. All right, that's all I got, man. Enjoy yourself. Thank you, brother. Peace.